Someday we're going to die. And someday we're going to meet the Lord. The Bible tells us it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that to face judgment. Every one of us are going to give an accountability of our lives to God. And you know what? When we stand before the Lord, we're going to stand the Lord in one of two ways. Either forgiven for all of our sins, or we're going to stand before the Lord unforgiven. And if we're standing before the Lord unforgiven, we will be judged for our sins. And the Bible tells us that we will be sentenced to an eternal punishment. So if you die without Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, there's no doubt that you're going to perish. The Bible tells us that. Whoever does not believe in Jesus will, will, will perish. The Bible says it very clearly. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. But whoever believes has eternal life given to them as a gift. Now here's the, here's the crazy thing. The statistics on death are pretty impressive. 100 out of 100 people die. That's impressive. Right? On planet Earth today, you can look this up. You can go on and, and ask uh, Siri like I did. And, and, and I asked Siri, how many people on Earth die every day? It's an amazing amount of people. Every single day, 154,995 people die. That's the average. It's probably some better days and some worse days. But that's incredible. incredible. Every single year on planet Earth, 54 million people die and go into eternity. Either into eternity in the presence of God or eternity separated from God. And so, you know, I mean, our, our number's coming if the Lord tarries. But the most important thing is, are you prepared? Are you forgiven before God? And God has offered a way for forgiveness, and it is through the blood of His Son being applied to our lives by faith that we can be forgiven of our sins and have eternal life. And so Jesus came into the world for that very reason. He came to accomplish for us what we were powerless to accomplish for ourselves. So we could never do for ourselves what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It doesn't matter how religious you've been. You know Paul the Apostle, before he became Paul, he was Saul. Very super religious guy. A Pharisee of Pharisees. And yet, even though he was religious, he was religiously lost. He was in a fog of religion without Jesus. And yet, Jesus radically changed Paul the Apostle. And he went from an enemy of Jesus, a persecutor of the church, to a worshiper and a follower of Jesus. He was radical on fire for the Lord Christian. And listen to what Paul says. I love this verse. 2 Corinthians 15 or 5, 17 says this. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Another version says, the Philip's translation says, For if a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything becomes fresh and new. What's Paul talking about? He's talking about the power of a resurrected life. We were once dead in sin. We were slaves to transgressions and sins. But Christ makes us alive. When we come to Christ and we're born again of the Holy Spirit, we are washed of all of our sins. We are cleansed. We are set apart for God. The word sanctified means set apart for holy use. And we can begin now to live in the newness of life because we have the Holy Spirit <clears throat> indwelling us and He gives us a new birth into a living hope, we're told. And so as we celebrate today the risen Jesus, it means that we can have a new life in Christ for everyone to whosoever would believe. The resurrection means that our debt of sin has been paid in full, that our judgment, our judgment that we deserved has passed because of what Jesus did for us. He bore our sins on His body on the tree. And so our sins have been paid for. And His resurrection means this, that we are now justified. We are declared innocent. The Bible tells us He was delivered over to death for our sins, was raised to life for our justification. And so the, the word means that we have now been acquitted of all guilt. So how awesome to stand before God someday, forgiven of all of our sins, and innocent, acquitted of all guilt, because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So, we're either going to stand before God, unforgiven, with all of our sins held against us, or we're going to stand before the Lord forgiven completely. So, if you haven't received Christ today, 
I really encourage you to open your heart and invite Jesus in because today could be a brand new day for you. You can be forgiven of all of your sins. And you can begin a brand new existence. And that's what happened to me 37 years ago. I gave my life to the Lord and the Lord completely changed my life. I can tell you right now, if you would have told me the day after I gave my life to Jesus, someday you're going to be a pastor, I would have said, what's a pastor? <laughs> and I would have, then I would have said, no way, you're crazy. Right? But the Lord, that's what the Lord had this plan on, on my life. To change me and give me the, the privilege of being able to proclaim His message to people. And see, we can have a, a meaning now in our existence. We can live with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, the Bible tells us. <clears throat> we can have peace. We can have the pe we have peace with God, and we can have the peace of God ruling our lives as believers. These are the things that the Lord gives to us. <clears throat> now, you might be hesitant this morning, and you might say, Oh, Pastor Joseph, hold on a minute. You don't know all the things that I've done. I've aborted five of my babies. I've hurt many people. I've used people. I've been on drugs, or I am on drugs, you might say. I've been sexually abused. I've been a drunk, I've stolen, I've lied. I've been thrown in jail. Surely I've done too much evil. God could never possibly forgive me for all of that. Well, I'll tell you right now, I can speak from experience because all of those things I just described were my life, B.C. And here I stand before the Lord forgiven because of what Jesus has done. God is a merciful and a loving and a forgiving God. And Jesus came to save us from sins. If you're a sinner here this morning, you're the perfect candidate for heaven. Because Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Paul said, of whom I am chief, or I'm the worst. So he came into the world to give us new life, to take away our sins. And that's what's so beautiful about the gospel, is that the gospel is a message that we can live a brand new life here and now, that we can be a new creation in Christ, that the past is finished and gone, that all things become fresh and new, that our sorrow that we brought upon ourselves, so much of the sorrow that we have in life is self-inflicted. So much of it. But that sorrow can be removed and it can turn to joy. And it's a joy that Jesus gives to us that no one can take from us. It's so wonderful when your guilt, the guilt of your sin is, is taken. I remember the day I gave my life to Jesus and it felt like this giant burden was lifted off of me as I gave my life to the Lord. And so we celebrate a risen Savior. And if you want a new life, I'm telling you this morning, the reason we did this is to let you know that you can have a new life and that you can be forgiven and you can have a real relationship with Jesus. That he's waiting for every one of us with open arms that we might come to him and that we might follow him. And it's simple. It's a simple step of faith. We have to be willing to come to him by faith. We have to be willing to admit and acknowledge that we're a sinner, that we need a savior, that we're sorry for our sins. We have to simply acknowledge that we want to open our hearts and our lives to Jesus, that he might rule and reign in our lives. John chapter 1 verse 12 says this, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, or of human decision, or a husband's will, but children born of God. And what does it mean to be born again? It means that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. He seals us for the day of redemption. Our names are then written in the Lamb's book of life, and we become one of the Lord's. And it's a beautiful thing. And so Jesus said this, I tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. If you think that you can get to heaven without being born again of the Spirit and forgiven of your sins by Jesus, you have deceived yourself. Jesus is the only one that can prepare us and make us heaven ready. And so to, today, if that's you, and you want to commit your life to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask you to commit your hearts to Christ. Now don't be embarrassed about it. Because this is, I mean, this is, a, this is a great day to do it. Like I said, for me now, 37 years ago, I have followed Jesus for 37 years. And I have not one time regretted that decision to follow Christ. What I do regret is all the years I wasted in sin, not following Christ. But Jesus can change us. And so, let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your Son into the world. That he laid down his life and bore our sins. 
and took upon himself our punishment and our judgment so that we could be forgiven and that we could be made clean and that we could have heaven as our destiny, that we could have eternal life in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your Son to die for sinners, and every one of us are, are those. We were those sinners, Lord, that you died for, that you suffered the judgment we should have had so that we could experience heaven instead of hell. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. With your eyes still closed and your heads bowed, if you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you the opportunity. What I want to do is have you raise your hand. Just keep your eyes closed, though. Have you raise your hand and say, yes, I want to receive Christ into my heart this morning. And I want to give my life to Christ. I want to repent of my sins and I want to follow Jesus from this day forward. If you know that you haven't done that and you need to get right with God, today's a great day to do that. So what I want you to do right now is if that's you, I want you to just raise, slip your hand up in the air and say, yes, I'd like to give my life to Jesus today. I'm ready to follow Jesus. Put your hand up high where I can see it. I see your hand down here. I see your hand on my left. Any more? Put your hands up high where I can see them. 